Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God, everyone. Welcome. I uh, hope you're having a good evening. Or it's evening for me right now, so hopefully when you're watching this, maybe it will be. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. I want to share with you a little Bible study tonight. First, I want to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Lord, I want to share this lesson that you laid on my heart, Lord. And Lord, I just let, let those who have ears hear your message, Lord. Let it touch the soul that you're reaching out to, Lord. For your will will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to answer two questions tonight. The first one is, what? There, there's, there's sex between a man and a woman. The act of sex. And we all know what we're talking about. Let's be adults. But we're going to talk about the other acts. Other than just normal man and woman sex. Um, you have anal you have oral uh to use a couple words um and be mature about this but are, are those acts a sin before marriage or is it just the actual act of fornication which the bible clearly says so we all we all don't argue that one because it says fornication 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 again and again and again in the bible flee fornication praise god so the number one question is is other than sex acts, are they a sin before marriage? And then we want to answer the number two question, are those a sin inside the marriage? Or is it only okay inside the marriage to have regular sex, if you want to call it that? Well, let me explain. The Bible does not specifically define these principles, but they do. Or it does, excuse me. 1 Corinthians 6.19 is where I want to take you tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Praise God. 6, 19 says, What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, praise God, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. Once you went in that water, you weren't your own. Once you made that commitment, you weren't your own. Once you had that intent in your heart, in your mind, you weren't your own. Verse 20 says, For ye are bought with a price. He died on the cross that day at Calvary. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit. Hallelujah, Jesus, which are God's. Because you went down in that water. Amen? So, those two scriptures are telling you, to, this is your holy temple. What would Jesus do? The next time you want to commit one of those acts, and, not, and it doesn't even have to just be the acts of fornication or other acts of sex. There's many we could talk about that we rely on, that, you know, go along with this. What would Jesus do? And I know the world has run that saying because they marketed it and mer merchandised it. But ask yourself, honestly, before he comes back, what would Jesus do? But I want to go jump up a scripture now to verse 18. So 1 Corinthians 6, 18 through 20 is what I shared with you. Verse 18 says, flee fornication, sex between a man and a woman, the act of actual sex. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against the own his own body. It's telling you if you commit fornication. This is to the church of Corinth. These were, there were souls that were baptized in Jesus' name or were being preached to be baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. And they were telling them to flee fornication. Don't have sex with each other. That includes the act of sex. And I'm going to prove it here in a sec. Any act of sex. Any act of lust. The act of committing that act. I want to jump to Ephesians 5, 3. Hallelujah, Jesus. It says, hallelujah, Ephesians 5, 3. Let me write that on the board here so you guys can see them. Hallelujah. I hope you can see them. Ephesians 5, 3. But fornication, sex between a man and a woman. And this is to the church of Ephesus. This is souls that were baptized in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Acts 2, 38. But, so they were... So it writes, verse 3, But fornication and all uncleanness 
or covetousness, let it not let it not be once named among you as become saints. We have to make it to the cross. We have to make it happen. We have to make the spirit alive. We have to make our hands lift up. We have to make our voice say, Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Covetousness. I want to talk about that word for a second real quick. 5-3. We're still on Ephesians 5-3. Covetousness. If you look it up in Strong's, Hallelujah, Jesus. means greedy. means you want more. You want someone else's stuff. Covet their neighbor's wife. You you covet their neighbor's truck. You covet his job, her job. Praise God. Uncleanliness. Let's talk about that word for a second, because it's the word we're looking for in this scripture. Why? <clears throat> because this scripture means that you can have no hint of sexual immortality or any kind of impurity. Because it's improper for God's holy people, for the holy temple. Praise God. Immorality is any form of sexual contact outside of a marriage. Immorality is any form of sexual contact outside of a marriage. Uncleanliness. I'm going to prove that, that comment in a second with the scripture. So don't, don't freak out on me yet. But I want to go back to Ephesians 5, 3 in the word uncleanliness. It means impure. Physically or morally unclean. Lustful. In a moral sense, impure. Praise God. In Jesus' name. Lewd. Even means demonic. These acts, porn, you know, any of those things that you put in that category, and you can even throw other things in here, and you can prove them in Scripture. Hallelujah, Jesus. But I only want to focus on these right now. Now, I said a minute ago, immorality is any form of sexual contact outside of a marriage. I want to prove that to you now, because I don't like to make up Jeremyisms, because they mean nothing. What matters is the Word of God Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. 1 Corinthians 7, 2. 1 Corinthians 7, 2. Praise God. Hold on, actually, I can just go back. Wait to make 1 Corinthians 7, 2. Give me a second here. Praise God. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. Now, that's talking about sex between a man and a woman. But there's more to this. Let every man have his own wife. And let every woman have her own husband. They were telling the church at Corinth, stop your fornication, which was sex outside of a marriage. Get married or don't have sex. And if you get married, you have sex with that one spouse. I'm going to get to that in a second too. Hebrews 13, 4. Praise God. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. That's Hebrews 13, verse 4. Now, I want to show you something, starting with the word, hallelujah, Jesus. Marriage is honorable. Okay, marriage is honorable. So, we're going to start with the word marriage. Marriage is honorable. Hallelujah, Jesus. And all, and all, and the bed undefiled. Well, I want to focus on the word bed undefiled. And then also it says, but whoremongers, whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Okay, so in the first part of this scripture, it tells you only the marriage bed is pure and undefiled. Whatever you and your wife do mutually, and I'll get to that in a second, whatever you mutually consent to is between you. Whatever words you want to put in front of sex, oral, anal, monogamous, praise God. <laughs> Any word 
those acts are undefiled in the, in the, and they're pure in the marriage bed. So whatever you do, as long as you consent to it. Okay, let me prove that. In marriage. So we've already proven that sex, we've already proven scripturally with 1 Corinthians 6, 19, Ephesians 5, 3, 1 Corinthians 7, 2, and Hebrews 13, 4, that sex acts are a sin. Any type of sex act outside of marriage is a sin. In marriage, let's answer that question now. Are these acts of sin, which I just kind of answered that one with this verse, which is going to cross us over into this lesson. Praise God. Bible mentions no restrictions on a married couple and their sexual relations, except involving others. First Corinthians 7, 5. First Corinthians 7, 5 says, Defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time. There's that mutual consent I was talking about. That's marriage, guys. One flesh, a union in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. 1 Corinthians 7, 5, that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your inconsistency. They were sinning. You know, we already proved that earlier tonight. They were sinning. He was telling them, flee fornication. Stop what you're doing. Fast prayer. Come out of it. Come out of your sins. Repent. Ask for forgiveness. Hit your knees. That's what he was telling them. Paul was telling him in 1 Corinthians. Praise God. These scriptures tell you no force between a man and a woman. It's mutual consent. What you do between a man and a woman it is between you guys. Um, I do want to mention in that last verse it said, But the whoremongers and adulterers shall not inherit the kingdom of God. The reason that scripture is combined in Hebrews 13.4 is because if you bring a third person into your bed, if you bring a third into your bed, or you bring a third into your sexual bed that your wife or your husband doesn't know about, then you are none of his. That's not Jeremyism, that's a scripture. All these are scriptures. Quit beating up the word of God to make it benefit you. God doesn't work that way. Dear Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name we pray, Lord. Let this touch who it needs to touch. And let them see that you are the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.